So we've talked about vision and we've talked about hearing. So we're going to talk about the other three senses today. And our senses are made up of sensory neurons that respond to change, or if you remember that change is sometimes called stimuli. Right? So we're going to start with taste. The sense of taste, first of all, works very, very closely with the sense of smell. And you probably know that if you've ever had a cold and had a stuffy nose, things haven't tasted quite as good as they usually do. Your sense of taste is also very dependent upon the chemicals in the foods that you're eating because taste responds to the chemical structure of molecules. So this is how chemistry is still involved in biology. So your tongue is covered with papillae, little small mushroom-like projections. Taste buds are distributed over the top of the papillae, and you even have some taste buds on the roof of your mouth. The distribution of taste buds isn't even, though. You don't have the exact same number of taste buds in every spot on your, on your tongue. In order to taste, water needs to be present also. That's why we have saliva. Flavor is determined by several different things. It's determined by the taste of the food, the texture of the food, the smell of the food, and even the temperature of the food can impact its taste. So the chemicals in food dissolve in the saliva, and then they trigger responses in the receptors in your mouth. This causes nerve impulses to travel to the brain, where they can be interpreted as taste. We have four basic tastes, sweet, sour, bitter, and salty. Scientists are still debating a possible fifth taste, umami, which is a meaty taste. So that's for taste. If you have questions about it, go ahead and write them down. We'll talk about that in class. And we said it works closely with smell, so smell is what we're going to talk about next. Smell can operate over long distances. You have smell receptors in the mucous membranes in the upper part of the nasal cavity, and they respond only to smells. They don't respond to the absence of smells. You can smell over 50 different odors, and you can adapt to smells. So, for instance, if you smell an odor for a long period of time, your nose will fatigue or it will get tired, and it will stop smelling that smell. Um, you can smell a new odor, though, because your senses are going to respond to a change in the stimuli. And the last sense that we're going to talk about is touch. You have five types of receptors for touch. There's light touch, hot, cold, pain, and pressure. Uh, receptors for each of those are found in different layers of the skin. So for instance, light touch and pain are near the skin's surface. You want to be able to feel pain on the surface of your skin rather than in the deeper layers so you don't get hurt as badly. Um, strong pressure is felt in the deeper layers of the skin and the other receptors, are hot and cold receptors, um, are located in the middle of the skin. If you lack pain neurons in a certain area, then you're not going to feel any pain there, so the pain and pressure neurons. And that presentation is over. If you have questions about it, remember we're going to talk about it in class. Write things down if you're unsure, or ask me uh, before or after class. That's all.